Hello and welcome back to Dial H for Hero Clicks. I'm your sexy ranch hand co host, Calderness. This episode, we have a lot of fun and cool stuff to talk about, including the Hero Clicks for Huntington's live stream and all the cool Hero Clicks previews that were showed off there, as well as the results from the Kilted Classic Hero Clicks tournament that happened this weekend. This is episode 461. Howdy, howdy. Let's get rowdy. So if you're looking for emotional satisfaction, my advice to you is seek professional Hero Clicks now. Again? How many people even play this game? Like, 100 least of dead and human. Over oh, yeah. six oh, people yeah. think I am funny. I'm your Captain America. That was just you in a costume. You absolute fools. I mean, be able to edit that out. Sure. That's cool because I'm going to make your clips like that forever. Are you kidding? Dial-H for Hero Clicks is brought to you by CoolStuffInc.com, where you can find cool stuff in stock every day, including all the latest Hero Clicks singles and sealed products. Make sure you check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. Use code DIAL5, that's D-I-A-L-5, the number 5, for 5% off your Cool Stuff Inc. order. Jordan, like always, in the studio is Simeon Bruce. What's going on, Simeon? Oh yeah, I'm glad last week I talked about how nice the weather was. Yeah. That's, that's all I said that made me happy. It wasn't 10 minutes of other nonsense, but... Mm-hmm. Uh, the Nebraska winds heard me. They so did. So they instantly decided to drop the temperature outside down to like 42. So we're experiencing triple, or this is a third third winter, like second breakfast. Uh, Nebraska always gets third winter, false fall. There's like a false diagram spring. of like where we're at. False summer. Yeah. <laughs> and now we're back to late winter now, which is really fun. But uh, that's made you happy last week. And that was jinxed. So, yeah. dare I ask, Simeon, what made you happy this week? Yeah, what made me happy this week was... I'm sure I'm happy I have both Not my winning the lottery. <laughs> oh. Not winning the lottery made me happy. Sure would be upset if I... No. Uh, it doesn't work like that. <laughs> um, <clears throat> Good try, though. No, what made me happy this week... Uh, after a long Easter weekend, I finally got to hang out in the studio again. That was pretty fun. Um Got to hear a lot about what it's like on the other end of a Galactus player, which was <laughs> as, you know, as toxic as I imagined those players could be. It was wild. I was like, man, so this is what it's like. Uh, but uh, no, I think sitting down and all of us watching the live stream and just uh, getting to live react, not really live react to anyone but ourselves, but yeah. to uh, just all the, the new figures and uh, dials and stuff was pretty fun. Um, stuff that like no one's seen and probably no one will see until at least a few of them not for quite a while yeah there's some, say yeah. convention exclusives avengers 60th is probably the soonest we're gonna see any of those but uh yeah we'll right on that was also like a ton of fun i had a blast as well i will say what made me happy this week like especially was uh ian and i started watching jojo's bizarre adventure oh, yeah. together we, i finally got ian he he actually he asked me he was like is jojo's bizarre adventure is that like on netflix or whatever that show you guys are always talking about and i was like why yes ian yes it is <laughs> uh and we finished like part one in like a day and then we finished part two in like a day and a half and then like last night we stayed up to like 2 a.m watching like part three um he probably got further along than I did because I had to pass out. Yeah. But like, he, he yeah. woke up and he was just sobbing, like Iggy, no, oh no, Iggy. He, no, he hasn't gotten. He definitely hasn't gotten that far oh, yet. Okay. Oh man, potential JoJo's bizarre adventure spoilers. Yeah. But he's he has seen Whole Horse and he's been like, oh, I see that gun is the Emperor. Yeah, that was really <laughs> funny. So that was really fun. I I love you know sharing something I'm passionate about and he's like watching it all. And at first I was like, man, do I just show him? Do we start with part one? And I'm like, of course. That's where you, that's where you yeah. got to start. But a lot of people say it's boring, and I'm like, no. The storytelling is immaculate. I'm sure he'll he'll love it. And he was like, bro, this Dio guy is straight up evil. I hate yeah. him. Yeah, part one definitely more. is necessary. It's so necessary. Um, part two, really like one of my favorite like parts. I think oh, so the pillar men are like so cool. That whole storyline's cool, and then it just really really makes like that uh, JoJo. Joseph like, is like Joseph's one of like, the best. JoJo's, yeah, he's one period. of the best, and that he actually carries into the next what two? Yeah, seasons? next two parts. Yeah, so uh, or next two parts. So like, yeah, getting you have to watch part two, and then I think part three once they like start busting out stands, it's just dried. so good. Yeah, never goes downhill after that. So yeah, it's just been a ton of fun. Just 
having seeing him react to everything for the first time man and this is probably like the fourth or fifth time i've watched all of jojo's bizarre you can't adventure let now. him get to the the murder dance with uh giorno oh, you yeah. can't let him get to the, like or not murder the torture dance torture or whatever dance. they call it you can't let him get to that without me in the room because that's oh yeah it's easily that. one of my favorite oh, like okay if I if I had I'll to sum d- up how weird you know. anime can be in a single like scene, that would probably be one of them. I'll I'll let you know once we start like part five because that's like episode three or four. Or yeah, something. It's, it's pretty, like, early. pretty early. So I'll let you know when we start part five. We'll we'll definitely have you there for it. And then you still haven't seen part six yet. And at the rate yeah. we're going, we'll be on part six next week or two weeks from now. Yeah, I'll so have to then start we can all too, yeah. we can all watch part six together. That'll be really <laughs> that'll be really fun. No, Ian, you have no Simeon. You have to stay until yeah. like three a.m. For, no filming today. We yeah, have to uh, watch. We have to watch JoJo's JoJo. JoJo. adventure. So yeah, if you're wondering why there's not a ton on the YouTube channel right now, that's what we're. No, I'm just kidding. There's a lot of cool videos coming up here soon. But anyways, we have a ton of news to talk about. So instead of a 20 minutes, what made us happy, we're going to keep it to a real tight five. Uh, and let's go ahead and jump into the Hero Clicks for Huntington's live stream. <laughs> We'll go ahead and start with some of the more smaller things, quite literally very small things. We'll kind of move on to the more uh, bigger and crazier and whatever things may not necessarily be the order. So they did show off some commons from Avengers 60, if that's Black Panther and Jessica Jones. We're not going to get into those right away. You can find the pictures online. They're just commons. I don't. This episode's already going to be really long, so I don't want to talk about them too much. Yeah. But the biggest thing is I just want to talk about the Avengers team ability. So they totally changed this for the Avengers 60th set, which is awesome. So it now reads, instead of being the when you're given a move action, you have plus one speed, which is kind of not useful outside the first turn. Uh, Now it's for all friendly characters with this team ability. At the beginning of the game, choose a team ability, slash, slash. This character modifies attack plus one when attacking one or more characters with the chosen team ability printed on their base. So it's not can use, it is printed on their base, which is something important to know for potential, like, uh, Teen Titans Go shenanigans or Batman right. Family shenanigans and stuff. But this is huge. This is like way, way better Avengers. And I assume, yeah, Justice League is the same. I assume when we see a Notorious, Justice League is probably going to change. They usually change. These, they're the exact same team ability. I assume they're going to change uh, in tandem with each other. But this is awesome. This makes Avengers way better. Giving plus one attack to like X-Men, Spider-Man, you right. know, Batman Family, Superman, whatever. You know, just any team ability you choose that, you get plus one attack. Way better than plus one speed on a move. Uh, Avengers needed a buff for a really, really long time since, yeah, they changed, since it, they in changed it the first time. So, yeah, yeah, so for six years, Avengers has been pretty not that useful. And yeah. this is huge. So I really like this a lot. And I think this will make you want to go back and look at some more Avengers figures and be like, all right, now. Yeah. Stuff was, like that. Uh, uh, I think she has it, but that um, 50 point Hawkeye from War of the Realms that's got oh, a yeah. 12 attack psychic blast a with like. 13 now yeah, in the right. Just, yeah, yeah in certain situations. Yeah. Um, yeah, so we saw Black Panther. We saw Jessica Jones. Not going to go over her, but there's screenshots online uh, pretty much everywhere. Everyone yeah. felt free to screenshot this video of Scott's. Ah, interesting. But, yeah. uh, no, she's cool. She's a, uh, like we said, uh, and well, maybe the video's out. I don't know. Whenever yeah, the video's out. Right out now. I don't even know. Yeah, if you the want to see us go into depth about every dial we're about to go over here, there's yeah. also a YouTube video. So, yeah. We did a video and... Uh, like Calder says in that video, she's more of like the alias Jessica Jones, mm. not like a jewel or like mom Jessica Jones, uh, which we've seen both those. That is um, true. Next up is Dan Powell got to design. He won or got second place in the uh, silver event at the Huntington's last year. So he got to design a legacy card or pick a legacy card, I suppose. And he picked the Iron Man from Avengers Assemble. And it's going to be coming out in the Wheels of Vengeance set, which I believe is slated for, like, fourth quarter of this year. So, like, last three months-ish. I think that's where they put it. Because they also gave us the rundown of what's going to come out next. It's going to be Avengers 60th, uh, DC Notorious, and then Vengeance. Wheels of Vengeance is supposed to be after that. So you can take a look at that Iron Man online. Um, Personally, I don't think he's amazing i think he's very interesting now and i think he will ruin some casual days uh he can be a pretty big attacker with the avengers team ability and rce top dial but at the end of the day i don't think you need to like 
spend two hundred fifty dollars that some people are asking for. Yeah, I wouldn't go out of my way to buy this figure. <laughs> Not specifically, no. I would just if you're an Iron Man fan, you just want to own it. What's then, funny? Yeah. The digital rendering has the wrong base color. <laughs> it's a little silly, isn't it? Yeah, they yeah. all had red bases, which was cool. Um, I that was one of the chase themes. I had all of them at one point except oh, nice. Clint Barton. Uh, Goliath man. or Giant yeah, Man, whatever Goliath. they called him. No, you're right, Goliath. And uh, yeah, I had all of them but him at one point, and then I also sold my Black Widow, I think. But I still have that Iron Man. I just, I'm not breaking a chase theme anymore. So I'm keeping him. That's fair. Uh, now into the ooey gooey, oh boy, crazy stuff. <laughs> this is so insane. We have two of the probably most ridiculous figures I've ever seen designed. Uh, in the form of, I would say point for point, yes. Scott Porter and his evil twin wearing a black shirt, also Scott Porter. Uh, so, is there a specific one you want to go over? There's a Huntington's variant Scott, which will come out first, and then there is yeah. a what they're calling Power Bomb variant of Scott that's coming out later. Both of them are going to be purchasable on the WizKids online store. So. Don't fret. They will be easily available, hopefully easily available. Hopefully they don't just sell out immediately. Uh, they are yeah. both unique, so there's also that. But do you have a preference? You know, let's swap, because I think you talked about the Huntington's one in the video, and then I think I talked about Powerbomb in the video. Okay. So let's just, let's just switch it around today. So Huntington's Scott... Here and by the way, these are gonna be sold. I think we already said it on the website, but all yeah. the proceeds is gonna go to Huntington's oh, that's true. outside yeah. of like shipping and manufacturing costs. Right. But like the straight up fifteen, twenty dollars these things are gonna be are gonna I really hope they're not any more than twenty bucks. They're more than twenty bucks. I could see twenty twenty five for oh, sure. Man, they they're worth it. They're insane. they are an insane oh. twenty five points. Don't and get me wrong. We also didn't mention um, them. Uh, there there will be some of these going up on auction, obviously. Oh yes. Um, most of the stuff that we're gonna be talking about in some form or fashion will be for the Huntington's auction. Right. Um, and then in addition to that, these figures will come in the normal convention box, but one side of the box has a big old blank spot for an autograph. Yeah, that's pretty cool. That's yeah. neat. So, yeah, if you want Scott Porter or whoever to sign your uh, your box, I don't know who else you would have, but uh, <laughs> you can have them autograph it. There's a little spot that literally says autograph and there's a little blank like window for it. It's kind of cool. But all right, Huntington's Scott Porter here even says significant appearance here. Looks for Huntington's charity tournament, real name Scott Porter, which is really cool. He has one keyword, celebrity, but don't worry, we'll solve that in about two seconds. He has a straight comics knowledge and acting roles. When establishing theme teams, choose any keyword, then choose a team ability that another friendly character or opposing character has on their dial. This game, Scott Porter has the chosen keyword and team ability. During game setup, if Scott Porter is part of a theme team, increase the result of your roll for first player by plus one. So now he's a 25-point dude that adds plus one to all theme teams. Since there's being three, you're now plus four. Can and give you a pretty good edge now. Any theme team, he never yeah, breaks. He just goes on to any theme team as well, yeah. period. So kind of insane. 25 also, points. Uh, they left out the text that they usually have. Uh, when he chooses a team ability, it doesn't say that is copyable. Yeah. It doesn't have that text. Yeah. So he can choose a team ability as of right now, unless th I don't think they're going to fix cosmic it. Cosmic energy, but yeah. Yeah, he can just choose cosmic energy or mystics, all the like uncopyable stuff. So kind of wild yeah, already, really just dumb. with one trait. Uh, there are some theme teams that I'm excited to fill out for this. Number one being Power Elite. Mm -hmm. uh, you yeah. know, that whole ability to me is like, that'll be really fun. Number two, obviously, the Bandit Keep keyword needed some love. So I can find oh, yeah. Scott Porter on the Bandit Keep I just team. Have, I have one word for Scott Porter. What's that? Actually, not one word. Four words. Oh, wow. That's Four words, words Calder. <laughs> yeah. Welcome to Doug's Army. Oh, my God. Hey, so Welcome much. to Doug's I Army, really Scott hate Porter. You, dude, that sucks. <laughs> Goodness gracious. All right. His, his second trade is fight for a cure. So, like Huntington's, you know. So, support. And then at the beginning of your turn, Scott Porter may heal a friendly character one click. Uh, just period. So, that's not adjacent. So, that's literally anywhere on the map. Just heal him a click. That's kind of insane. Cool. Don't worry, it gets better, listener. His third trait, yeah, this 25-point piece has three traits, counting on the community. If Scott Porter is part of a theme team, which why wouldn't he be, he starts the game with three community tokens. If Scott Porter has any community tokens once per turn, you may re-roll any roll. Any 
Let me just say that. Any roll, if you do, after resolutions, remove a community token from Scott Porter. So that's not a tax. That's not just a tax. That's not just breakaway like prob. That's super senses, regeneration, leadership, willpower. That it's is also, uh, a single D6 roll for like Q yeah. or something. Uh, you know? It's uh, like the roll for destroyer. Uh, it's yeah, gosh. Ultimate oh nullifier gosh. roll. It's oh. like any effect that would. Uh, Thanos picking gems. I don't know if he still rolls for that. I don't remember. But He does. Um, yeah, like anything that would involve a roll so <laughs> playing you're playing uh thanos is a uh, mission point role yeah <laughs> if yeah you are. yeah Gosh. that's insane guys and it's th- only three times sure but like it's only three times but it it's is also not line of fire it's, it's also anywhere on the map never been done before like they've yeah. never had a power that just blanketly said re-roll any roll i think there was a domino well, i mean that was like 50 or 25 points. before the change true <laughs> yeah but yeah. yes this is very old Since school prob then, there's been nothing so yeah this dude gets the real oh, actually rocket raccoon could re-roll any, any oh that's right the galaxy yeah 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 um, but yeah, this is still nuts because Rocket at least needed range and line of fire and stuff. This Scott. So what does Scott do sitting all the way back in your starting area? Oh, sorry. I didn't get to his defense power. He has his entire dial. Silly of me. Super senses. Friendly characters. Modify defense. Plus one when adjacent to a friendly character that shares a keyword with them. Again, it doesn't have to be adjacent for that. It's anybody else. So what does Scott do from your starting area? At the beginning of your turn, he heals a friendly character one click. Well, sorry. At the beginning of your game, he just chose any team ability. He gets to be on any team. He gives you plus Plus one, so that's before you even start the game. He gives you plus one to roll. Only way to get a plus one to a theme roll. Period. Right now, Uh, it's either three or nothing. What does he do now? Sitting in your starting area. Well, first turn he has sidestep TK and perplex, so he can do that right away, which is nuts. And then he can do uh, heal a character one click at the beginning of your turn. Period. He has three, like okay, sure, once per turn, whatever. But he has three map wide uses of omega, like insanely better probability control. And then also he gives all friendly characters if they're adjacent to another friendly character that shares a cure with them plus one to defense are you kidding me that's insane yeah. so this is 25 points four clicks of life yes he can be outwitted yes he can be one shot but yeah, man they, even 25 points for sidestep tk perplex would have been insane and he could he could uh copy team player yeah or you know if you wanted to yeah i think team player might be the way to i mean he outside of just, cosmic energy team player because then you could do spider-man senses. yeah you could choose yeah so like then. if you do team player you could bop between different <sighs> team abilities but alternatively yeah going for that super sense with like wonder woman or spider-man team ability uh friendly characters modify defense plus one when adjacent to a friendly character a doesn't dumb. have to be scott like nope. it's just if Anywhere. you're next to somebody and this is a theme team which most likely is if you're playing with this guy uh let's be honest i think you're only going to play him on theme teams well i don't know why you wouldn't play him always on theme i don't teams. think you would you would explicitly play him on theme teams but he's so much better on theme teams um he's built for it but he's 100 yeah. percent clearly built for a theme team so assuming it's a theme team everyone he's, that's he's next literally to somebody insane. is gonna if have you a don't understand one. why he's insane then i guess i didn't do a good enough job telling you why he's insane i'm well, sorry but he's nuts for man. example what was the previous scott porter we had he was a bystander who was 20 points with, yeah he was super perplex and i think side like sidestep in cap yeah and uh he was 20 points this guy's five points more for three more clicks and just infinitely more stuff going on this this single-handedly like if people were worried about like theme teams being like oh bad oh they hate theme teams this guy now is like why not play a 275 point theme team and then just throw scott porter on because holy smokes he makes it insanely better if this was like an ultra chase it'd be going for like a thousand dollars yes it would be super expensive because this is a I'm not going to say it's going to like define meta, but like I think that there will be a lot of people that win with this figure. If we were doing our whole thing at Worlds, like, hey, what figure do you think will see the most play at Worlds? I think one of these Scott Porters has pretty Might be, good yeah. running if theme teams end up being more and more popular due to this Scott Porter. There's I still enough it. keyword cheating that like it's you know it's not so far gone that people have completely given up on making a theme yeah and we'll see that when we get into the tournament stuff but um, so yeah go ahead and talk about the next one yeah this dude's nuts maybe they'll make it uh not as nuts oh yeah just luckily he's unique just like this other one so this one is the power bomb scott porter so this is whiz kids unboxing uh i've been doing it for decades that's how scott porter talks it is. um he has the celebrity keyword and he just has simply team player so he has the team player team ability he is also unique he has a uh first trait is comics knowledge and acting roles scott porter has all keywords even when he's not on the map 
So just it doesn't say it like during force construction or anything. He gets no. them all. So I think uh, he just has all he keywords. Just, I don't know. I don't know if this if it lets him like start equipped or not. The way it's worded. Oh yeah. Like because bat he belts. would have yeah he'd have symbiote. He'd have yeah bat family. He'd have everything. Um, and his second trait. So yeah, just blanket all keywords even if he's not on map. So literally goes on any team ever. Uh, just right off the bat. Second trade is what is up everybody out there in Heroclix land at the beginning of the game. If Scott Porter is on a theme team, other friendly characters modify attack plus one as long as Scott Porter is on the map. At the beginning of the game, if all other friendly characters are from the same Heroclix set, other friendly characters modify damage plus one as long as Scott Porter is on the map. I don't think wow. the second half of this is as good. Um, all other friendly characters have to be from the same hero click set. That's kind of hard to do with a competitive thing, but it's very easy to do with like, I mean, it's just easy to do in general. There's always a sub theme. Like you could play him with the, uh, Guavengers or, oh, yeah. or with the carnages or anything like that. And then he gets their keywords. I think sets are tops off like that. Where, yeah, like just Disney plus alone. I mean, like, Disney plus or Disney wonder plus. woman, like, there's sets where oh, yeah. he definitely could, yeah, but he's he's kind of like a reverse version of the Collector for the same points, because um, Collector is like if everyone's from a different set, right? but then he uh, he does just at the beginning of the game, if you're a theme team, regardless of that second half, all friendly characters get a plus one attack as long as he's on the map, and then, yeah, also dumb. I do like that it's only an at the beginning of the game check, and it's not a consistent check, so I guess if he's no longer on the map, then it goes away, but right, like that's how most of those things work yeah um then he has two special powers so he's got four clicks four range one lightning bolt he is a standard character in almost every other way uh full dial of sidestep with six speed he's got two clicks of an 11 attack two clicks of a 10 attack he has some toughness some willpower mid dial then he has a stop click on his fourth click and that is stop regeneration when he uses it heal each adjacent friendly character one click so just a stop click if he can use regen. I feel like this guy probably won't get a hit that very often. You'll want to like double tap him as best you can. But if he does, everyone that's adjacent to him gets to heal. That's pretty cool. And that's what's in the cup today. Um, and then his special attack power that he has his whole four clicks is power bomb. So that's knockback pulse wave, but doesn't target friendly characters. So he can just be clustered up you know hide him in the center of like a big group of characters that are friendly and then he has that four range pulse wave that it now is and it ignores all friendly characters or tar doesn't target all friendly characters which is wild we don't see a lot of things that do that there's a few characters that have but uh this is going to be one of the better ones i think uh, and then his damage power he's got one damage on his first two clicks with prob so he can re-roll those pulse waves and then his last two clicks he has two damage with perplex so i think this one's a little bit weaker but better team player yeah in certain ways and then the other one is just like god mode scott like he yeah. he uh, did the ultra instinct shaggy move and just kind of ascended except um, like somehow better because he's so insanely cheap yeah you know? instead just, of being hypersonic super strength he's just dumb in a different way Crazy we'll have to support. do a series where uh, I don't know if we'll be able to. We will. We'll, I know we won't be able to swing it, but we'll have to do a series where we pit like how many would it be? Eight of these Scots against another eight of these oh, Scots that would or be something. So awesome to see, see who wins. wins one. I am assuming it's the one with the power bomb pulse wave. Ridiculous. Yeah, at least the pulse but wave. All these re rolls, man. And he's got. Yeah. You, you know, I mean, I don't know. Power bombs giving everybody a twelve for two, though. You know. That's true. Yeah. This is a one instance where I really wish there we'll had flavor it. text so we'll that like his sidestep yeah. and stuff all could have gotten filled out. But that would have been cool. Yeah. So this one's real name also Scott Porter, and then his significant appearance is WizKids Hero Clicks unboxings. Funny they chose that and not like a movie or show he's been in. But I mean, this is like, <laughs> like based around this is him yeah in unboxing. This is the Hero Clicks unbox Scott Porter. Uh, but speaking of you saying movie or show, he did hint at the map oh, this yeah. year was going to be something. He was like a need for speed. He said all this, whatever, yeah. but it's like Speed Racer is what yeah. he's, it's basically what he meant to say. Uh, he was trying to be all cheeky with it and everything, which I appreciate. But it's probably going to be a Speed Racer map, which sounds awesome. So a yeah. racetrack or a garage or something, we'll have to see. I don't think stop. they're legally allowed to call it that because I remember no, the not. football stadium was called like 
something something stadium. Oh, sure. So like they're basing it off that, but like it's not you can't legally straight up call it. Yeah, that's pretty fair. But yeah, so those are both Scott Porters. Let us know what you guys think. Next up, we have some convention exclusives. Now they mentioned a lot, so the ones they did mention aren't the ones that are being shown but they mentioned really cool ones one i'm excited for is they mentioned captain america on a pegasus which sounds freaking awesome that was from more of the realms that wasn't made he, he would have went with that spider-man with the helmet and shield so yeah i'm glad to see that get made so hopefully we get our power man iron fist and wolverine from that story uh line also made that'd be really cool but anyways they mentioned that they mentioned a hannah barbara joker they mentioned a another Gwen Thor, An, which I thought yeah. was interesting. Um, there is a, mentioned there is Gwen Pool, but then there's I, also mostly just Gwen, Gwen Stacy. Stacy, yeah. like, but we already got a Gwen Thor, so it'd be weird to get two. And I know I'm curious what's it going to be. We also get what else did they mention? They mentioned Mermaid Batman, Mermaid Batman, they mentioned and uh, Rainbow Hands Superman. Yeah, Superman that shoots rainbows, which is interesting. Something something about. Superman, I can't remember if he said where it came from, but that's probably like a Golden Super Age thing. Gold, where Superman just had any random power yeah. that he wanted. Yeah. Sneezing universes, Superman. I believe, and I do believe that's like all they mentioned so far. So we have three more convention exclusives to cover today. First up, this is insanely wild. Uh, I have no attachment to it, but I know a lot yeah. of the Hero Hooks community thinks it's really, really cool it's that it exists. Out of left field, it for is. sure. Uh, but it's Space Ghost. So, again, the Hanna-Barbera property is just being fully used right now, which is cool. So Space Ghost is Celebrity Cosmic Police, and he has a few traits here. So Invisibility and Intangibility gives him Stealth, Super Senses, and Super Strength traded, which is really freaking good. And then he has a second trait called Jan, Jason Blip perplex if space ghost has no action tokens he can use it twice a turn when space ghost uses perplex to target a friendly character that character has safeguard opposing probability control until your next turn that's really freaking good holy smokes includes himself yeah so if he targets himself with perplex yeah so that can make your sky tyrant pop off better he does have a 30 point line Uh, he's a six he's 80 60 and 30 seven clicks top dial five clicks with the 60 point line and then two clicks with 30 point line really insane on this guy he's really cool and then his special attack power is free choose one and space ghost can use it until he chooses again he's got three little options here option one is energy explosion and penetrating second blast option two is esd and invulnerability and then option three is force blast as free and telekinesis pretty solid dang options i like the idea of being able to uh carry up this 30 point guy he has no action tokens he can perplex up two other people so they don't get probed and also modify their you know values and then he can just force blast his free knock somebody into a wall or off a ledge that's really really cool i like that a lot for force uh for force ghost space ghost here space ghost uh, yeah. those are all his abilities he's also a team player uh, his dial is pretty cool. So he's got two clicks of charge, then three of sidestep, and then two clicks of charge. So he starts with charge on two of his lines and sidestep on his 60-point line. He has that special attack power his entire dial. He's also flight, five range, two targets. He has toughness for his first two clicks, combat reflexes for his next three, and then willpower on his last two, which will, again, help him to get no action tokens if he can yeah. keep getting willpowers, right? And then he has leadership on his first two clicks and power on the next three and close combat expert on the last two. So he's pretty stout on those last two clicks, even though he's only two clicks long. Uh, Super senses can help him stay alive, but I think he might see some play as an alpha strike dude to help people out, yeah. safeguard, you know. I think he's got really good. a ton of good utility at 30, but then also pretty hard to deal with that 60 if you pick the esd uh invuln option yeah then he's you've always got, a 19 yeah you're always a 19 and reduced stealth, by two too. stealth and super senses yeah so like a rollout all that other stuff team player so maybe he's copying something that helps um yeah i think i think both or all three lines really uh have a place to fit i, I think, think 30 really points being in a an 11 for four um his highest is pretty wild on his yeah yeah definitely the option of a 30 point tk and then it's also just like a solid attacker uh with like rollouts and stealth and super strength getting through barriers and stuff yeah but mostly just super cool that we it's still a dc property but it's so far removed from our normal dc properties that it's awesome that we're we're getting these kind of things uh next up this is one that I think a lot of people will really love the sculpt of and the dial kind of matches. So um, we got some wild stuff going on. This is Venom, God of Symbiotes. So from the 
King and Black storyline when Venom's going to get up against Null. Scott went into like the whole details about how like the Silver Surfer melted his board down and then uh, Venom grabbed like some stick or something that was magical. I don't know, whatever. He has a giant glowing axe is the big thing. And then he's not in the normal Venom colors. He has yellow like all over his chest which is pretty wild and then he's got some flame slash like cosmic energy kind of effects going on so speaking of cosmic energy he has that team ability uh he has the symbiote cosmic deity and monster keywords he has a 270 point line and a 150 point line so at 270 you get 11 clicks at 150 you get uh four less so you'd be at seven clicks for 150. Uh, I will say for 150, you get all the same powers as you do at 270. It's just four less clicks, and you'll really want all the clicks of that special defense power that he has for those first five I mean, clicks. You are not having like prob top dial and stuff yeah. like that. That's like just the biggest one. There's some there's some wild stuff. So we'll get through his two traits and two special powers and then we'll get into his insanely long dial so yeah. his first trait is god of hunger shape change steel energy when venom god of symbiotes uses steel energy instead of healing he may generate a symbiote bystander and then it's max four the symbiote bystanders have plasticity shape change super senses and blades uh, they are a 6, 11, 17, 2, I believe. It looks like the way. Yeah, that's kind of... A little blurry. Kind of blurry. But they're they're great tie-up pieces. It's max 4. That's one of the ways that he generates them is when he would use Steel Energy. It's also a great option if you're top dial. You can use Steel Energy. You're not going to heal anyhow, but you still get a benefit, which is awesome. Uh, he also has improved movement for elevated and characters, but he doesn't have flight or anything like that, so... Just normal improved movement. His second trait is King of All Symbiotes. Leadership. At the beginning of your turn, Venom God of Symbiotes may generate a symbiote bystander. Not if he succeeds at leadership. He just gets to may, like do that. He just may generate yeah. a symbiote bystander. So every dumb. turn, you can always just do that. Wild. If he is 270 points, he may generate it adjacent to a friendly character named Symbiote or that has the Symbiote keyword. So let's say I run up with a Carnage Surfer bop bop him with my hypersonic double attack and then at the beginning of my next turn venom god of symbiotes just places a or he'd have to be at 270 so this isn't like a wild high point game but he placed like the symbiote he generates next to carnage surfer um there's a lot of situations maybe i already have a bystander that's tying somebody up and then i just place another one next to that and now like they've got two plasticities with double rollouts so either way he gets to make one but if he's at his top line they're going to be placed next to another symbiote character uh, with name or keyword. Now his special speed power. Uh, leave my body and tune into theirs. Charge. When Venom God of Symbiotes uses it, before moving, he may choose a friendly character named Symbiote or with the Symbiote keyword. If he does, place him and the chosen character in each other's squares. So there's no... It doesn't say anything about like range or line of fire, uh, just if they have the keyword. So when he when he uses charge, when he would use charge before moving, you choose a friendly character that has symbiote or symbiote keyword, uh, the symbiote name or symbiote keyword, and then you place them in each other's squares. So if you make one of these at the beginning of your turn, as he does, yeah. you can move it six squares, and then you can say, I'm going to charge. Re like place Venom that six squares away where the other one was just oh, moved yeah. to and now he he has 10 speed top dial so now he's got an effective range of 11 pretty wild or just carry it all the way across the map or yeah else. just he literally makes one turn one yeah. and you can just go all the way across the map and then that same turn have venom charge yeah. and place him like in each other's squares it's super wild um and then finally, he has a special defense power on clicks 1 through 5 and then his last two clicks, 10 and 11. And that's impervious. When Venom God of Symbiote uses it, increase his result by plus 1 for each friendly character named Symbiote. So rule of 3, I'm assuming. Uh, no, not rule of 3 because it's not a combat value. You're just increasing the result. Yeah. So rule of 4 because it's max 4. So yeah, you could roll a 2 and still succeed or a, a 1 that still oh, fails, dang. I guess. But... Uh, if there are four or more friendly characters named Symbiote, Venom, God of Symbiote, can you or can reduce penetrating damage. So a good reason to not have them die, but you're pumping them out so easy and 
top dial, he's got a pretty solid attack, so there's a good chance that you're going to be able to steal energy with his first attack and generate one that way. But let's get into his dial. He has double lightning bolt, uh, zero range. He has that special speed power for his first five clicks. Like I said, 10 speed, top dial at his 150 point line. He goes down to eight speed with that special speed power. After that, he goes to normal charge and then his last two clicks he ends on flurry now again that's flurry with steel energy and then on like i said on his last two clicks he has that impervious power so he's constantly pumping out these bystanders luckily he doesn't have mastermind or like some way to absorb them and heal because that would just be disgusting but um <laughs> mid dial from click six to nine he loses that special uh defense power and gets normal invincible which seems wild because that's his weakest like section of clicks uh technically ironically yeah yeah uh then uh on clicks one through three he's got a 12 attack with precision strike he has five damage with prob on his first two clicks he goes down to four damage with club uh, with prob on clicks three and four and then on click four through six he gets blades with an 11 and he goes to exploit on click five there's a lot to like you just have to look at the style it's all over the place he has a random click of blades on click eight yeah it looks a little silly but then it also has he's got quake with exploit i mean like from click five to 11 he has exploit so if you start him at 150 it's all exploit but he does start with that speed power and that defense power regardless of which point value i think this guy's nuts i don't think he'll be seeing like huge meta play but he also gets to start with a symbiote for free uh the red or black and then in addition to that he's just a super cool sculpt yeah he looks awesome dude. yeah this is really one of the coolest sculpts i've seen in a we long don't know time. where these will come out but i'm assuming if you want to if you want to have instant access you'll have to win one in the auction for huntington's true or you'll have to be at the huntington's event and maybe get one that way but outside of that i'm guessing maybe nationals maybe worlds so just like last year's huntington's we might not see this guy actually released until one of WizKids' big events in like six months or something all right, so Wonder Woman here is 150 points or 90 points. She also has a lot of abilities. She has two traits, special speed, and a special damage power. She is an Amazon Justice League DD Pass Warrior and, of course, has the Wonder Woman Ally team ability. This is a more old-school-looking Wonder Woman. She has her significant appearance being All-Star Comics number 8 from 1942, so it is kind of a, an older-school Wonder Woman-esque look and everything. So her first trait is we're all Amazons, and that means we fight together. When another friendly character with the Amazon keyword takes damage from an attack, after resolutions, you may place Wonder Woman adjacent to that character. That's really good. Very, very solid. Our second trait is Hephaestus's Armory. During force construction, up to three from the characters, the Amazon keyword may be assigned equipment without paying the equipment's cost. So, like... At least they did an Amazon and not Deity. Yeah, thank goodness. Uh, so, like, if you play this in silver, you could just give them three gauntlets. And yeah. And she's worth 90 points, so she'd be worth, like, zero points to give, like, all these gauntlets to everybody. Yeah, cubes, gauntlets, her, like, XO, point value. Just... Yeah. So that can be kind of nutty. That can really give some legs to stand. I, I like this big help for theme. Designing things with like theme in mind when there's no more theme props is really cool. So I like that ability she's, a lot. And she's also one of them. She has Amazon, so she's exactly, one of the yeah. people that she gets could also start with something for free. Whatever. Yeah. Uh, her special speed power is only for her first three clicks on her 150-point line, and that's charge and sidestep. So nothing crazy, but her... Her 150 point line is really nice. And then her Lasso of Truth special damage power is on her first five clicks. So again, the first three for her 150 point line. And then her first two on her 90 point line is empower free. Choose an opposing character within four squares in line of fire. That character can't use damage powers until your next turn. So basically what the Batman Wonder Woman did, but she had to hit for them to not use like, you know, uh, damage powers. This one just says free. Uh, hey, you there. Yeah, you can't use damage power, so that's pretty crazy. So at 150, what's she looking like? Like I said, she has a special attack or speed and damage power. She has 10 speed, 12 attack, 19 defense, and that's with super strength and invincible. With a 5 damage on those first clicks, uh, she also has the flight ability the entire time. And then on her 90 point line, it's it cools off a little bit. She's still a 10 click long dial for 150. For, uh, for 90 points, she's only a uh, whatever it's called seven click long dial but that's 
really solid still so she just has normal charge not charge sidestep still has super strength still has a 19 but impervious instead and then she has four damage with her damage power then she goes on to three clicks of close combat expert and then two clicks of exploit she's impervious for her first three then invulnerability for her next two and then combat reflexes for her last two once she loses super strength she doesn't get another attack power until her last two clicks where she has blades and then once she loses charge on click seven six she gets flurry and then on her last two clicks she has plasticity kind of a fun wonder woman really really neat yeah. I feel like that Hephaestus' armory trait should have been like a if she's played at 150, yeah. get all the free equipment, you know? Otherwise, like at 90, she gets something. Yeah, give a lot of free stuff at 90 points. She doesn't have normal super senses anywhere, so she just has it on a 6, which is nice. I don't think everybody, especially with these team ability changes, needs to have super senses for 50-50 every single time. No. It's honestly a really annoying power, and I'm starting to, starting to really hate it now, uh, so I do like them cooling off a little bit with it. But she's really fun, and I think if you're a Wonder Woman fan, you're like, this is awesome. This makes my Amazon teams just that much better. So she's also, really cool. Uh, like not that you'd necessarily want to do it, and it would only, uh, after next rotation at least, it would only work in silver. But oh, yeah. one of the options is all the Wonder Woman equipments where like they give boosts to people like this Wonder Woman um, because she's got the Wonder Woman team ability. So, yeah, there's like the, the bracers, the lasso, the uh, armor, yada, yada kind of yeah. stuff. Yeah. Um, Man, I think her most dangerous click is number seven, where she's got flurry with a twelve attack for five. So you could pump out that ten really damage good. on that click. Uh, but yeah, just a really solid Wonder Woman. Um, no, no real complaints about it at all. Like I, I I'll, one complaint, I guess. Sculpts could use a little panache. Uh, I know it's they're they're simple. going for like old school Wonder Woman, but after looking at Venom God of Symbiotes. I guess Space Ghost is also just standing He's there. He's kind of waiting for the bus. Yeah. But it's Space Ghost, so he gets passed. Yeah. Can't wait to get a hundred of these Scott Porters so I can cut the little bricks out of his hands oh and gosh. give my my cool Hero Clicks characters oh gosh. Hero Clicks bricks <laughs> to hold. Um, they're getting pretty meta with these figures. They uh, really we saw are. the um, the sculpt of the toy guy with the Star Oh, Star-o, yeah. So, That's really wild. I mean,. The Scott holding a brick of Heroclix is really funny. Not that it's like anything super new, but mm. that's all of the... Well, that's not everything, yeah, but that's... I forgot about the last thing. Yeah, there, there is one final thing that I guess we should like start with. It's like the worst. It's kind uh, of the lamest thing ever. And you're kind of like, whoever designed it is like a real loser, I can really tell. It's, Anyways, uh, go yeah. ahead, it's, uh, it's the bystander. So, um, yeah, we talked about how we should have mentioned it when we talked about Dan's legacy card. We should have, yeah. Uh, but it's part of that same. Yeah, so Dan won or got second, and then the winner got to choose to become a bystander or make a bystander, I guess, or get to pick a legacy card. And so Scott Crampton of Critical Clicks fame, I guess, and Murder Mystery fame, fame. and Four Points Gaming Club fame and Podcaster Keyword fame, uh, apparently Detective fame. He decided to make himself, so we now have a Scott Crampton winnable bystander. You can get these through playing in the online battle royals. It's one of the options there. You can also get them at the Huntington's event. I don't think, well, outside of the auction, I don't think there's going to be any other release unless you wait until next year's Huntington's event. But uh, Scott Crampton here, he has four range, one lightning bolt. He has four speed, four attack four defense and four damage and he costs four points this is in reference of course to his keyword four points gaming club he also has the detective and podcaster keywords which two of those aren't real things but uh he has stealth smoke cloud toughness and enhancement so he is a four point enhancement with four damage uh, but he only has four attacks, so you'd almost have to roll a critical hit to hit most things. But, oh, wait, he has a trait that is called Critical Clicks. Scott Crampton only deals damage on a critical hit. Well, you'd, you'd almost have to, so there's that. But it is kind of funny that that's the only way that he can hit is yeah. with a critical hit. And then when he does that, he'll actually deal five damage. Um, then he has free, make an attack. So you have this bystander that can just make free attacks, which is... I mean, it has to be a crit hit, but still. Uh, And then he has, if Scott Crampton is adjacent to a friendly character, lines of fire drawn to him are hindered. Since he has stealth, unless they have improved targeting through hindering, uh, they won't be able to see him unless they do a close attack or whatever. I... I'm torn on this because I feel like four points for enhancement is too good to ignore. Really, really good, yeah. But at the same time, a four defense is probably like the easiest four points to score in the game. 
it's yeah it's like a back and forth because like yeah if you do like a good ranged alpha attack or if you just have somebody with insane range and you just have an extra four points to put this guy next to him you might as well um but then like also equipment's five points and like i don't know maybe there will be like a uh one of those teams where both it's like one guy's running scott crampton and he's got 299 points and they both like ko their each other's forces and it's the guy who built with scott crampton wins because he had one less point on his team <laughs> that's why we round points that'd be really funny but yeah this is a uh, that's that's it i guess that's the uh, yeah that's the whole bystander yeah it's pretty good four 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 every value is a four um all six of the values are a four and then it, when he hits it'll deal five so almost worked it almost made sense yeah not quite sadly. but um yeah yeah and yeah, I don't think there's anything else to say. You can get it from playing no. in the online battle royals if you're interested in those. Uh, I think that's the ROC Discord or just contact Brad Broyles. Um, otherwise, keep an eye out on the auction where you can pay like 60 bucks an for one of these. amount of money, yeah, for a bystander. <laughs> yeah. For a and poker chip. Outside of that, the only way to get one is to show up to uh, Hunt, Huntsville. Huntsville, Alabama. Yeah, Huntsville for Huntington's. Um, but yeah, that is... The entirety of the live stream. Yeah, uh, they talked a lot about other stuff. That video is up, so you can rewatch the hunt or the Huntington's live stream with Scott and V Muse, and also other Scott shows up for a little bit to talk about his bystander. So you can rewatch that if you want on the WizKids YouTube channel. Yeah, but uh, outside of that, we've got a tournament to talk about. We do indeed, yeah. So the Kilted Classic was this weekend. It was held in Chicago. I believe they said they had around 50 players. This is a 300 modern age tournament. And then what do we have here? Is this like top four? City yeah, this is okay. top four. Top so four, cool. We're going to start with uh, what were some bills? most likely uh, the fourth place person. Probably. Um, I Just judging. Probably by, like, got the, the lowest place they could have possibly gotten. Yeah. That would just make sense. I like these new build sheets. I don't know if these are official WizKids build sheets. No, I this, missed them. Uh, this was a co-design between PJ and was someone it? else. Yeah, they're pretty cool. I um, like these build sheets a lot. Let me see if I can I will find say it real quick to do a uh, shout out. Cause... The way they put maps on the build sheets, it does look a little clunky. It's definitely in a space-saving way and not an aesthetically pleasing way for how they put maps on the build sheet. But besides that, it's a really, really good build sheet. I, I like them a lot. Oh, Anthony Barnstable oh, that and makes sense. PJ why Bolin. Was, why it was yeah, quality. Anthony's part of it. Yeah. Anthony always makes good stuff. So, yeah. Yeah, he's makes a good sense. build sheets. But yeah, literally besides like that little map bit, I really like these build sheets a lot. Yeah. All right. So in most likely fourth place, we have Luca Valhalla. Yeah. Uh, the event is the Kidded Classic. It looks like from the handwriting. Yeah, handwriting. I'm gonna try and say these things because uh, some of the some of these people didn't type out their their build Although sheets. Although I won't lie, Luke's part does have some of the best handwriting <laughs> we've seen uh, on all these on yeah. almost all these build sheets. So yeah, so, as fun as he is to make fun of, he actually does have way better handwriting than a lot of players. Three maps he played were the Haunted Pier, the Otherworld Castle, and the Morlock Tunnels. Uh, he was running World's Finest, so similar to what he ran during our event, the, uh, oh, the IPF. IPF tournament. He, uh, few changes, but he ran World's Finest at 60 with the utility belt. They get it for free. He ran Sicarian Iron Man with the Cloak of Levitation assigned. He ran Venom Magneto with the Sinestro Core Ring. Um, Mad Jim oh. Jaspers, Molecule Man, The Flash, The Commissioner uh, with the dark hole assigned to commissioner and then the legacy carnage at 10 points. Uh, so equipment that he had on sideline were all black necro sword, Waldo arms, emotional modifier, pumpkin bombs, shock gauntlets. And then he also had one leftover slot for scrappy do, uh, to come in with one of the monsters dies, right? Is it? A, yeah, no, it's not it's... necessarily a monster. It's a, a scrappy come in for, I don't remember. I think it's just anyone. And then if it's, uh, Scooby specifically Yang, Scooby Mystery gang, Inc. then it's, someone's slight or he comes in on like click one instead of the other um let's good old scrapper do he is did oh scrappy you need an r to spell scrappy he do indeed <laughs> so scrappy do specifically comes out for a friendly character with a shared keyword is 60 points or less is ko'd um he is celebrity detective mystery Inc. yeah right, cool uh and if they if the KO'd character is instead Mystery Inc., then it's click one. So, yeah, anyone with one of his four keywords and then Mystery Inc., it's him on click one. But, yeah, it's 
just like those other things like Jeff the Shark or uh, just Scroll Spy. Yeah. Yeah. Things like that. I think Scroll Spy is specifically opposing characters. Yeah, though. it is. But anyhow, that's his sideline. Uh, and then his terrain, because they have a terrain slot. So he played the big old anchor, which I don't remember what exact shape that is, but it's like an, a double L. It's like a T shape. Uh, it is like a T. Yeah. yeah. The shipping container and then just a generic object, which was for Sakari and Iron Man, I imagine. Um, and then his tarot cards, he has, what, eight of pentacles, three of cups, eight of cups, eight of wands, and two of swords. Uh so those and are his five. Star. Oh, so he actually played six. Yeah. Wow, six tarot cards. But yep, that was his team. Not going to get into the logistics of how it worked because I don't want to. Uh, we Fair have enough. we have a video of it. It's also not that true. different. Um, there's only a few differences. The biggest one he doesn't play it with uh, Wonder Woman. Wonder Woman, yeah, anymore. death metal. All right, next up we got old Corey Gold here. <laughs> He is using Desert Wedding, Negative Zone Indoors, and the Construction Site as his only 2x2 two two map. He has Lasso of Truth on Chainsaw Wonder Woman, Cloak of Levitation on Sakari and Iron Man, and Sinestro Core Ring on Faust. So what is his team? So besides those first three, he also has uh, the second. He's a 70-point Prime Wonder Woman from Batman Team Up. He has The Watcher. 40 point watcher from the Disney Plus starter, Venom Magneto you know, at 35 points. Then he also has the utility belt, Green Lantern Cring, of course, on Order of Prime. For terrain, he has the 2x1 elevated, the 1x1 elevated, and then he also just has a standard object using the 10 of Wands, 7 of Wands, the Hanged Man, Knight of Pentacles, and the Ace of Cups for his tarot cards. You and mentioned Sicarian Iron Man in I did the... mention Sicarian okay. Iron Man. Yeah, yeah, I mentioned it with the, uh, the objects okay. up there. But yeah, so it's a pretty beefy team. That Prime Wonder Woman only has Scrappy Doo oh, yeah. side. Yeah, it's only sideline. I'm seeing was fewer scrappy. and fewer people forget to add Scroll Spy and stuff to the sideline, like Sentinel yeah. and you know whatever. It's I mean, I funny. guess if if you're not running Mad Jim and you don't want to bring something in that your opponent can score, uh, I guess I will say worth of note before this guy went into top uh, four here, top eight, whatever it was. Uh, he did only take one loss to Jalen in the yeah. in Swiss, so that's something he does has his uh, win loss record on his build sheet, which I always like in retrospect for things like this when we can see your win loss. It's really cool. But all right, that is Corey's team. Yeah. It looks pretty neat. I haven't pretty messed cool. around with that uh, Prime Wonder Woman at all, but I'm glad that she's seen some play because yeah, she is. That uh, definitely was the underlooked one of the two primes from that set, the two super rare primes, I should say. All right, next up, we're going to go with, let's see, let me double check, double, double check. So uh, we are going to go with old Rob Ober here. Um, so I'm pretty sure this is the this is second place. The finals teams. Yeah, yeah, so in the finals, it was Rob versus Ken, and I'm pretty sure Ken took the win. So we're going to go over Rob's first. So he played on the Krakoa construction site and dockyard maps. Okay, so he's got um, two small maps there. Yeah, he played two standard objects and then a 2 by 3 elevated, which would be the shipping container terrain. Uh, his team consisted of Sakarian Iron Man with the cloak. You see that a lot. Double Saturnine. One has the web shooters, uh, which I'm told is really good. And then one has the radioactive clay, which I'm told is worth losing the points as soon as it's used. I don't know. I've never done that, but... I imagine that, like, yeah, if in certain situations, you don't have to do the mind control, but as soon as you do, that radioactive gone. play is gone. Um, Merlin making it to that's, the finals. That's really cool, Which actually. I don't think many people were expecting, no. the 50-point Merlin chase. Uh, the Mr. Sinister at 45, and then the Rise and Fall Professor X, also known as the X-Men Swap Professor X, uh, and then Bay the Blood Moon with the Sword Bearer trait so that she can bring in a sword, essentially. Um, his tarot cards were the Seven of Swords, the Three of Pentacles, the Tower, the Queen of Wands, and the Eight of Cups, and then sideline tarot cards for Saturnine are the Three of Swords, the Six of Pentacles, the Nine of Swords, the Knight Swords... Knight of Swords and the Ten oh, of Swords, no, so a lot of a lot of attacky powers yeah. that he's wanting to get boost from. And then his uh, real sideline is uh, 
so this is for X swap mostly, but he does have Scroll Spy, Scrappy Doo, Sentinel, and Sentinel. So he is able to swap in a Mr. Sinister and a Dr. Moira McTaggart that comes out to 65 points, which means that he can swap out that yeah. Bay the Blood Moon and Professor X perfectly to swap in these two figures. So then he's got a Moira and a double Mr. Sinister, and then he's also got a free, well, quote unquote, cheap equipment with the sword right, dropping from Bay. Less sword. Yeah. Um, the reason this is kind of really good is the fact that Moira McTaggart can just power action to give an X-Men a yep. rally die, and both of these Sinisters have rally ones to replace them uh, on an opposing attack roll. So the goal here is like make your opponent crit miss, basically. Or right. you can just use one a, of them to just a make it a in miss. crit miss, yeah, basically. It's really, really solid. Um, yeah, so you're able to do that, and then also Saturnine, yeah, friendly attack rolls, plasticity, remove it. Yep. Pretty wild. Um, doesn't say within range or line of fire. Nope. So no, it's yeah. Just map, uh, then it's double wild. Saturnine means that like their uh, what attack goes down or their no the not an attack the roll itself goes down goes by, down minus, by one. minus one. So minus two for double Saturnines. So it's really just a high defense, hard to hit team. And then Sakarian Iron Man goes out, scores you some points. He's really their only kind of attacker on yeah. this team. Uh, Merlin uh, also, I guess, for what it's worth. Um, also just kind of wild when he he does the free roll of d6 on a four through six nope not that one um it's during each player's turn that player can't give their uh their characters free actions if they've already given a number of free actions equal to their action total that turn so if they have leadership then they're locked in at four free actions which is kind of wild when you start getting into like counting actual free actions that you take you know yeah. you you sidestep perplex that's half your free actions like you're you're one away from being done with actions uh, at least free actions that turn um but that does count towards his team too so he also has to keep that in mind for like sakarian iron man i think picking powers is a free action and then i believe it is uh the sidestep with the cloak is also a free action so uh it doesn't help his team except for the fact that he built with that in mind so right. uh but then on to ken small's team the grand winner uh, by via roll off, <laughs> yeah. I should mention. It's pretty sad when a tournament has to end in a roll off, to, or you know, zero. It can't end in a zero zero yeah. loss. So That'd be a, a roll off, which is a little bit of a bummer. But let's go ahead and see what Ken Small was playing here. He's got the Disney Plus Chase Scarlet Witch with the Darkhold. He's playing Arachnite at sixty points with the Cloak of Levitation. He is going to be using Chainsaw Wonder Woman. He also has Felix Faust, Magim Jaspers. And then he has the Rare Star Sapphire from Wonder Woman, and then the cheap little 20 point green lantern that's the alan scott green lantern uh from batman team up the legacy one so they both have the star sapphire ring and then the green lantern ring respectively so if he's got two construct droppers chainsaws whatever he's got mad jim uh for some shenanigans let's go ahead and check out what he's got on the side he's got angler he has muramasa blade Black emotional Bone, modifier emo yeah. mod golden armor golden and armor i think that's Carnage symbiote symbiote. Okay. Wow, I'm the sorry, symbiote. Ken. This handwriting is really, really tough. <laughs> Didn't mean to t super call you out, but man, oh, when Simeon said golden armor and not gold jan armure. Uh, I was very impressed. <laughs> He's running just three, three regular objects. objects. What a guy! All right, what does he have? He's got ace of pentacles, king of swords, ace of cups, knight of wands, major arcana is the high priestess and those are his tarot cards so ken congratulations on winning the kilted yeah. classic i don't know what the prizes were necessarily like but hopefully nice oh by the way he, he, all his maps are two by two maps he has oscorp warehouse construction site and dockyard so yeah anytime he's all about no them, theme them small maps guess, dude yeah i should have mentioned neither of like the last two teams had theme had theme yeah um we'll see if that changes with the scott porters but honestly you don't have to build with theme even with those it's just kind of a cool boost yeah being able to do quite a bit of barrier with this team and then um he's got he some good really, attackers man he's got a rack knight he's got some chainsaw droppers yeah i feel like the reasons why and maybe we'll do a video at some point as like why a game may end in a zero zero loss uh personally i would never like that's just I, I guess i'm just never not that level of competitive i've never won a big event like this so i can't speak to why you should but uh, the reasons why on this specific set is you've got one team that's just stupid hard to hit and not even in like the traditional bumped up defenses kind of way just you know dice control roll control and then like limiting um with merlin limiting your free actions so like even if 
uh, Ken had a bunch of like perplex and stuff on his team, he'd only be able to use four things. So um, that, you know, Rob with like that control on that end and then uh, Ken with the Felix Faust and just the amount of, you know, bystanders that like the ring, uh, I want to call them ring bears, the lanterns oh. can do. <laughs> So the amount of like bystanders the lanterns can spit out and the amount of barrier that they can make with those constructs and everything else, uh, you know, those count towards their free actions is making those constructs since, you know, they, You're right. they yeah. can't, it's they could free. power. Uh, I don't know if they're allowed to power if they have the keyword. I think it's as free when they have the keyword. So yeah, that w- <laughs> those would count towards his free actions, but I feel like neither team had a big Arachnite choosing powers is free. Yeah. Yeah. Like Arachnite choosing his power. So he would have either had to full send Scarlet Witch and Arachnite and probably miss his opening volley or he would just have to wait for Ken or for Rob to come to Ken, and then Rob is not. There's to not Ken. a yeah. There's not at all. No reason team. to no, because yeah. he's got locked in misses, not locked in hits. Yep. So yeah, it makes sense to me why like these two basically defensive shell kind of like they're completely different teams. They are, but yes. they are both very defensive in their own way. Um, so it makes sense why it would go to zero to zero. It's just a little lame. Yeah, it's just, zero zero. It is. But, eh, it is. Yeah. what he is and it's at, at least it wasn't a roll off at worlds because we've also seen that so you know True. it just happens in these larger tournaments but that is uh all the news for this week um Julio. we did get some dates of when scott's gonna be unboxing stuff i think he said may may first may, may first may first so it's gonna okay. be the, the week leading up to the hero hooks for huntington's event and then keep an eye out on the huntington's event page i guess mm. uh because they'll be doing some sort of super pre-release sealed yeah, of avenger right. 60th so that might be some of the first unboxing stuff that we see outside of scott too uh yeah so Scott being the week leading up to Huntington's and then their unboxing for Avengers 60th will be used for their uh, team, not a team event, but just like a single sealed. Uh, yep. It's going to have Avengers 60th. So I don't know how much product they're going to get. Honestly, if they would have said, and we'll have Avengers 60th battle Royales all weekend, I would instantly be there. I yeah. would be like, I don't care what it costs. I will be there 1000%. Uh, I, I'm definitely yeah. going to be playing in some online battle Royals as I did last year. Oh, for sure. I think those are, I think it's really fun. Um, I hate roll 20, but I, I think battle Royals are really fun. And then also like it's for a good cause. I'll be checking out the auction last year. I bid on an absolute ton of stuff and didn't win a single uh, thing because my app or whatever crashed. So, uh, this year I'm going to try and open it up on my computer with like a, there you go. Yeah. The app is always so iffy. It's for just, it. It's just, they yeah. don't have a dedicated website. I really wish they did, but Maybe better. Um, the, yeah, the app, just like kind of, it gets too many people and it just crashes sometimes yeah. so you have to constantly refresh and stuff but i did lose literally everything i bid on last year which was uh my wallet was happy but i was sad personally yeah. um but yeah we'll we'll talk more when we get closer obviously yeah. that's almost a month out still and so obviously if you want to keep track of that keep an eye on the roc and then the hero clicks for huntington's web page has more information on all of that and we can link that in the description of this episode if we feel like it we might <laughs> we'll see now, i think it's a great cause uh of honestly course. um and uh i think that hero clicks players and i'm just gonna you know say this with no uh, reason behind it whatsoever. I think that Heroclix is big enough to have multiple charity events going on at the same time. I don't know why I would make a statement like that, but I think that it's, you know, uh, I've I've dealt with the, um, geez, the, the charity events that PJ's ran, the ones that uh, Jay's, Jay's ran. Jay's run, yeah. Um, Aries ran one so like I've I've participated in multiple charity events all ongoing similar times and stuff so I think that it's perfectly acceptable for two to happen and I'm going to definitely support this one because Huntington's is a great cause the Hero Clicks for Huntington's tournament is a great cause I've heavily enjoyed it every year they've ran it I don't know if I'll ever make it in person just because the distance and it's a it's a big weekend it's a four day weekend also I just I'm not a big competitive player I would have like you said I'd have to have a good like battle royal reason to go and then like a team event i agree i agree i think it's a small bummer that they do the constructed teams and not like seal teams i think t- seal teams is way more fun but constructed teams is fun in its own special way but yep that is everything for here hooks for huntington's that's the kilted classic guys now we're just gonna go ahead and jump into some quick listener questions there are dozens of us 
if you want to ask us questions, you can go message us on Facebook or Twitter or send us an email at dialageforheroclicks at gmail.com. But all these listener questions are coming from our Patreon exclusive Discord. If you want to join that, it's only $5 a month and you get a ton of extra stuff, not just the Discord, but you get to see videos early, sometimes early podcasts. You get to play Bad Samaritan, which can get you more entries into giveaways and stuff and whatnot. So there's all sorts of really cool stuff that happens if you just join our Discord slash our Patreon. Again, minimum's like five bucks. You can donate really whatever minimum, but to get into the Discord and all these other really cool like benefits, that's at the five dollar tier. We have a lot of people join like the fifteen or twenty dollars for all the other cool stuff, like our action tokens and all this other really fun stuff that we do. But just throwing it out there. But all of these are from our Discord, so let's go ahead and get into them. Brad asks if Calder wore swimming trunks, would Calder wear blue jeans designed to swimming trunks? Or even better, would Calder wear cut off jean shorts as swimming trunks? Uh, he did preface this if I did wear swimming trunks. I don't wear swimming trunks. I don't go swimming. can't remember the last time I've been swimming. I'm not really a fan of swimming. I don't mm-hmm. like it. Um, wow. So, yeah. I don't... <laughs> the only... I just, I like dry land. What can I say? I'm a big just, fan of dry land. Uh, <laughs> humongous fan of it. No, I'm just like, I get in the water and I'm like, I don't okay. Have, I ain't got gills. What but it's you, like, and now you, what? Yeah. Here we are. I'm wet now. Um, you know? I went swimming when we were, I think the last time I went swimming was at Worlds. Yeah. Um, and like swimming, I stood in a pool. Yeah, sure. Um, cool. And I didn't bring swim trunks, so I just found a pair of like shorts that i brought that weekend Just and wore those pants yeah really awkward for everybody. <laughs> it kind of was no the uh, most awkward part was uh when they were drying they didn't dry evenly so i was wearing shorts and it just looked like i had a big wet spot in oh, the worst possible gross. place to have a wet gross. spot for shorts so that was like the worst part of doing that no um, the, uh but to answer brett's question sort of i do like cap he has a picture of captain america wearing swim trunks i like that look that's a really cool look uh but i actually i bought this thing because i thought it was really funny i bought like a 1920s style bathing suit where it's like it's oh, trunks wow. yeah. that's like a re- it looks like it's like a wrestling yeah, singlet, it's a singlet basically and i think it looks really cool and i now i'm excited yeah. to like try to go swimming one time so i can like look like ye oldy beach guy yeah i think like that's the, just... the old swimming shirts and pants where yeah, it's just exactly. like this like weird white fabric and like i think it's really fun like i yeah. think it's hilarious uh but i seriously doubt i will honestly ever go swimming it's just not it's not a me not me but i think it's funny yeah yeah fair you could just like walk around a pool in that you don't gotta go no, you're right yeah, yeah. yeah i'll just i'll just go to the beach in that and i'll just kind of walk around <laughs> not go swimming stand there stretch a little bit yeah. pretend like you're gonna go to the water and I'm then like, like, like really turn comb around my hair up real nice 1920s-esque you know yeah all pompadourish yeah exactly i think it'd be, I think it'd be really funny <laughs> And then I'll, uh, you know, bring bring a, a lady with me, and she'll have like real big sunglasses and a real big like sun hat. Oh yeah, and she'll be basically wearing like frills. I don't know what the ladies wore during that yeah. time. They also, also wore, like, like a, a singlet thing. Yeah. thing. Yeah, sometimes and also like just pants look like and we're cuffs. Completely time displaced at a public beach. Yeah, yeah I think that'd be really fun. And then uh, I'll have a disgusting tan line that's a wrestling <laughs> singlet. I was gonna say do that like. Um, that, like cosplay makeup where you look like you're in black and white. Ooh. Have you seen people that do like their full body in like yes. gray and then yes. like yeah. darker in certain areas so it looks like you're black and white? Wanda Vision esque yeah. look really freaked people out of the yeah. Beach. Back in my day, we weren't in color; we were just uh, the, yeah. old, the old black and white. A uh, guy I work with old enough that like one of his kids when they were younger asked him what the world was like back before color. Oh my gosh! Before they, like we were watching color. watching some like old tv show like it's andy, andy griffith show, show yeah. or something <laughs> and asked him that and like the kid probably was like only like six or seven at the time but he was just like i had to clutch my chest and just <laughs> feels <laughs> oh that's hilarious uh right on next up darkest simeon luke 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 asks if state license plate mottos were shared hero clicks traits which states would have the best and worst and what would they do this honestly may spawn a video series idea because i really like this idea of a hero clicks trait so he has new hampshire is live free or die <laughs> um just or die yeah which is gnarly uh, license plate's pretty. That's way too. harder than I thought New Hampshire would go. I know, like, right? Never think of New Hampshire as like, <laughs> I don't know. You've got two options, uh, and one of them's death. I, I think Virginia allows you to. Uh, I don't know what the lovers card does, but I think because it's Virginia is for lovers is their state motto. I would assume that like it would make the lovers tarot card just it replace every deck, every card in your tarot deck with the lovers tarot card, and that's what that's what Virginia's would do. 
Um, South Dakota's license plate motto, I think, is just the Rushmore State. It's not our our state motto is under God the people rule, but I think it just says Rushmore State on our license plate. I want to say license plate. It has Mount Rushmore, so maybe something like destroys blocking because they they had to blow up a lot of things to carve out Mount Rushmore. Oh, great faces, great places. Oh, geez, great faces. That's our great license plate motto. Oh, goodness gracious, That's some sort of like free movement kind of effect. Yeah, like, I think so. We could place free to place yeah. something. Yeah, like uh, what's what's the the wall crawler thing where you? Like, oh, yeah, just yeah. like wall crawler. Great placement. Place adjacent to blocking terrain. Free places character <laughs> within four squares line of fire adjacent to a piece of blocking terrain. That's South Dakota shared trait. What uh, was Nebraska here? Nebraska, uh, the latest see. garbage, just disgusting. We have, we have nothing written Garbo on it. Garbo license plate design I've ever seen in my entire life. Yeah, thanks, Pete Ricketts. It looks cool. It looks cool, but I can't see it because it's so it's faded, yeah, man. It's, it's yeah. It's well, it's so faded, and then half the image is covered by our ginormous lettering. Right. Um, the old Nebraska license plate wasn't necessarily good, but I could at least tell what it was trying to. Do. See, the design was inspired by the mosaic on the floor of the state capitol building that's called the Genius of Creative Energy. Depicts a Roman character harnessing earth, air, wind, and fire. That's what it's supposed to be, but really all it looks like is like a guy holding like four strings in one hand, well, and then there's like lightning bolts you and know stuff. What it, uh, it looks like for me when I'm behind somebody. It looks like, what is that? Is it just lines and stuff? That's what it looks like. Yeah. I can't see a dude. No, you if have it, to. If I could actually see the guy, I'd be like, oh, that's kind of cool. It's if you look at the actual lightning. artwork, it's cool. Yeah, like the I, art is I cool. looked it up when they first unveiled it. Um, our previous license plate wasn't much better, though. Um, no, it was. Our previous one was just like an outline of the state. Wasn't that just like a blue bar? It just top? says, yeah, it just says Cornhusker yeah. State. Oh, Cornhusker. Um, but yeah, I, I don't know if I have the new one or not. Uh, but I don't think you do. There's also, I mean, there's also like alternate ones. So I've thought about getting That's the. That's the one uh, I always see the, the the one far right before the Huskers. Oh, the, the blue bar with the yeah, sower. Yeah, with the uh, sower. That's the one I'm so. The used sower to is the statue on top of the our Capitol building in uh, Lincoln. You guys just love Capitol building, don't you? Yeah, every state's based on the. Oh Capitol yeah, we. Building. I mean. Nebraska, if people don't know this, um, every reference is to two cities in Nebraska. It's mm. either Omaha or Lincoln, and 99% of the rest of the state is completely forgotten. We have a huge, beautiful area. Uh, Calder's been there. It's called, like, the Niagara. Oh, I love, like, yeah, it's awesome. It's amazing. That's it's Nebraska. Really, it's really and, cool. And uh, we get zero reference. We used to have Chimney Rock on one of our license plates. I think I've seen one that um, had that, yeah. Yeah, we, one of our other big things, for whatever reason, is the Sandhill Cranes, even though it's, like, the ugliest bird and no one cares cranes. i hate oh, these there's, cranes there's a old chimney rock and also a big city oh i see you know the they represent the one or two the that we have yeah one of the many rivers surrounding nebraska <laughs> yeah it might be the plat that runs through oh. it or yeah who knows but yeah uh nebraska is like i i'll say i'll base my answer off of um a shirt that i have it's the outline of the state and it says nebraska a great shucking state and uh you would be able to like hyper time or yeah hyper time and shuck opponents off of you somehow. I don't know. Oh, shuck shuck them, shuck them back. I would like to add the the text as an official game term. Shuck an opponent off me, please. <laughs> Get these shucking opponents away from Ooh, me. Ooh, spicy. Uh, yeah. So a great shucking state. That's my personal motto for Nebraska. Okay. But uh, I don't know enough state mottos. I only. I honestly. Uh, I know Nebraska's is technically like the good life or something, and that's oh, just yeah, it is. It that's is just good life. incorrect if you've ever lived <laughs> here. Like, Jeez. it's it's pretty good life if you're in certain areas, but like, there's plenty of uh, Nebraska that's not good life. And the uh, good life is purely for West Omaha. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if you want to break it down to just Omaha, yeah, that's that would be yeah. There's there's money people out west. Those money, yeah. Rich oh, folk. Money we, bags McGee. Fifty percent of Omaha lost power. Well, we better fix West Omaha's. Power power first well, oh course. you're asking us why we focused on them even though there's fewer people out there well it's because it's easier that's our answer not because we hate you poors oh uh, boy uh <laughs> bill asks he had to update his license plates do i get royalties and it has the spartan logo with dial five not even dial h yeah bill it's nope. the dial five our cool stuff ink code um get five percent off I, I am all for Bill making this his license plate. We went on a bit of a diatribe in general about all his other possible license plates yeah. he could do. I think Dial 5 is still the winner, even though F Lover was really funny, really good. But yeah, I, yeah he's representing his Spartans. Oh, the, the ETH, yeah. The ETH, yes. Uh, Ethereum Lover, yeah. 
uh vanity plates are cool i've always thought about getting one but i just like every time i try and sit down and think of like seven letters that i could combine yeah. into something that like encapsulates my car or me or something I, i'm just like eh. i've wanted to get a dial h plate for a long time just yeah. like one that says dial h but i'm like i don't really i've seen people that just do weird. their uh their like initials um stuff like that Dox but, myself with my car yeah or just to confuse people that too Honestly, if I saw someone's initials, I'd just be like, oh, they just have a normal plate, random numbers, random yeah. letters. I saw one that had my last name once spelt out, and I was like, Bruce, wow, that's really? weird. Yeah, it was strange. just yeah, it just said Bruce, and I was like, huh. It was a gold star plate, so I... Uh, so you were like, uh, Lewis Banner. I saluted uh, it as it drove by, and uh, was like, <laughs> even though they have my name, I have no clue who they are. Uh, and then Alex asked, yes. is... <laughs> Pickleball, a weird sport where we hit Ian Chainsaw with a paddle. Well, Alex, not many people are going to get that reference, but yes, that is exactly how you play pickleball. That is 100% correct. It's also a donation tier when we do our live stream Oh to yeah, hit Ian Chainsaw with a paddle. Tell us so. about the live stream, Simeon. <laughs> yeah, so... About, uh, this, this is going to be a really fun event, guys. This is I'm pumped. next weekend, correct? Next Saturday, I think, is when we're planning on doing this. Is, uh, I yeah. thought it was... Did you say the 29th? I don't know if we've actually announced it. I thought we were going to like 28th, like that Friday. Okay. So uh, next weekend, uh, the 28th, we'll we'll make a formal post. Oh, yeah. Not, yeah it's not this weekend, but next weekend. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're right. Oh. Sorry. I was thinking for some reason when you said next weekend, this weekend. Yeah, yes. not not the upcoming one, but the, the one the after. The one after. Because we're technically releasing this at the tail end of this weekend. But yeah, so uh, the 28th, um, maybe the 29th. We haven't actually made the post yet, but we, should, we will. Yeah, uh, it'll. It's going to be one of those two days, twenty eighth or 29th. Yeah, we'll be we'll be starting a live stream. Um, at some point, we'll be going for as long as we can. Basically, uh, we'll definitely set like a time limit that we're like shooting for, but kind of depends on you guys. And this is all going to be a charity drive for the IPF. We're going to do one final push. We're at the point where we can bring one person to Worlds already, and we're definitely locking somebody in. Uh, but we'd really like to get to the point where we could bring two people, maybe even a third person, um, or just fully accommodate the two people that we can bring. Uh, again, if you know anyone that lives abroad uh anyone from a community that you've played against before that would like to come to worlds that has the ability to come to worlds all that we ask is that they can come to worlds that they physically like are capable of getting on a plane and getting here they're not you know um a felon i guess is i don't be... are you limited to fly if you're a i don't know uh so they can't be banned from an airline i guess that's that's one of the things um but also they have to be able to provide a passport and like all that stuff they have to physically be able to board a plane and come here legally outside of that we'll take anyone from anywhere like uh, there's as long as they're a hero clicks player and as long as they want to come to memphis and play Right. Um, all they have to do is submit a video and they will be put up for consideration but no this live stream is going to be one final push if you've seen our episode 400 uh, we did a live stream where we're going for two different charities at that point so we were kind of in competition but this year we're focusing on the IPF itself um, yeah there's there's all kinds of fun stuff that we're going to do we're going to talk hero clicks trivia we're going to get people on during the live stream to do some bad sam we'll talk literally anything that people in the chat want us to talk about as long as it's clicks related or at least tangentially tied yeah. to what we're doing or we're... about four to five hours in it doesn't have to be related to yeah at all probably no, at sadly. a certain point we we will devolve completely yes as those things that do uh, but we'll also be having challenges so uh you know if you donate five dollars and you post a screenshot or you just you know say my name is xyz or i guess in um in fundraiser the the website that we're using for this fundraiser uh it's called fundraiser with a z in fundraiser you can put a description of what the donation's for oh yeah so when you make a donation you can just say for blah 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 that's what people were doing in our last live stream and so that was uh greatly appreciated because we figured out pretty quickly what we needed to do for the money but anyhow uh things like forcing us to sing a song uh things like a push-up challenge so matt reed really wanted us to do like a push-up or like a physical challenge this next live stream will actually have the space for that we will i think yeah. we'll be using the different backdrop so we won't have the dial h studio backdrop yeah, we'll have we'll move it yeah. yeah we'll we'll be sideways in the room instead of long ways or long ways instead of sideways <laughs> but anyhow uh we'll do all that stuff uh we'll of course chair shots are back on the menu um, they are. shots of any sort maybe hot sauce again or the spiciest ranch in the world. Mm. Ooh. Uh, 
Ian thinks that he can outspice me. He thinks that he's like the king of spice, and I'm like, man, this mayonnaise looking tall glass of mayonnaise looking guy. He thinks that he's going to outspice me, so I, I'm willing to put my taste buds and brain cells on the line, melt some. Uh, but tall that glass only, of mayonnaise, <laughs> only, uh, only for money, only for charity money, only for charity. Yeah, so in all good fun for charity. Yeah, so we're also just taking any suggestions that the chat might throw out or anyone might throw out last year some of our biggest donations were things that people just made up also um last year we had a if we hit a certain amount i will shave my face well my face i've been keeping it trimmed not specifically because i don't want to shave it but just i've just felt better with it trimmed down it was getting pretty crazy looking so that's not really a great stretch goal so we're going to have some things where if we hit a certain point we're going to share some unseen things some uh, dial h or other i don't know random stuff that we might have we'll put a list together and once we hit certain things we'll show off for the community but we'll be posting a bigger post with all the real information maybe setting up a discord again for Might people to that. hang out yeah. just for like the time being so like everyone can join and do that thing again Uh, But otherwise, yeah, just keep an eye out on our social medias. Obviously, post uh, Facebook, Twitter, and uh, then YouTube will have a post when, like, we're about an hour or two going live. So if you're subscribed in any context, you'll see it. And, yeah, one final push to get... uh, a couple people get some more international that, players that to show uh, up to worlds. Yeah, it's it's really such a good cause, guys. I think the community should really come together, rally behind the idea that Worlds is an amazing event. If you yourself uh, live in America and haven't been to Worlds, I would say definitely try to go this year. It's really amazing. But if you've been to Worlds and you know how awesome the feeling of Worlds is, hanging out with everybody, meeting all these new people, all these cool hero clicks players, because that's the game that we all love and enjoy playing. And then to get to share that love with people that never like in years and years and years thought they could ever make it to worlds and getting to bring them to worlds would be so huge um and i think it's just such a really cool thing that we're doing and i really hope you guys can get behind that and enjoy bringing people to also, worlds um shout out to uh josh k who is uh gonna help host a in-person event oh yeah it's gonna be at the four horsemen comics and gamings in morgantown west virginia um and i think he <sighs> I, he has not posted the date, I don't think, yet for the event. But uh, they're going to get that event ran before our cutoff date. So we will have um, a, n- one other tournament, I guess. At least one other tournament that will be uh, donating to the IPF, all the proceeds. Yeah. So that's really cool. Uh, the fact that he reached out and we didn't have to ask anybody to i mean we did ask people if they wanted to but the fact that he reached out and went through all the legwork and everything and got his venue on board with it was really cool i'm really glad and i'm looking forward to once this year's over and we have essentially a full year to just get the people to worlds uh make some posts about like the funds completely raised and stuff like that then we can just fully focus on setting up some sort of tournament structure i don't think we'll ever be able to do big prize kits like the roc does with like uh, states and stuff probably not but, but you know we'll we'll figure out ways to accommodate people that are willing Winamap-esque to do it ask prize kits those yeah. would be pretty simple to do and it'll always be 100 percent of what people donate is going to go to getting people to worlds it'll never be like we're funneling it back into dial h or no. anything like that uh the ipf funds are completely separate um and yeah, we, uh, we aren't even using the funds to help pay for shipping or getting no. any prizes out. Those are all coming uh, out of the Dial H Bank, out of our pockets. Yeah, that's our um, one of our other com- contributions outside of the other contributions that we've done for it. Yeah. So, yeah, we are running at a complete negative. Um, hopefully, we'll offset that by having an amazing time at Worlds in uh, 2023. Goal, yeah. um, also, we haven't had that announced when when worlds will be announced Still. we've had people that speculated on the date but uh yeah we don't have an official date yep we so. kids hasn't officially posted anything yet for worlds there's a lot of speculation but we shall we shall see but if you guys want to get some hero clicks uh, whether in preparation for worlds <laughs> nationals any tournaments or even just pre-ordering upcoming sets like avengers 60th or notorious go ahead and go on over to coolstuffinc.com where you can find all the latest hero click singles and seal products over there Go ahead and check them out at coolstuffinc.com. Use code DIAL5. That's D-I-A-L-5 for 5% off your Cool Stuff Inc. order. And, always. And like always. Oh. Oh. Sorry. Oh, okay. No, no. You're, I thought no, you were no, saying No, no, no. By all means. Oh, uh, and like always, uh, don't litter. 
don't be a quitter. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, yeah. No happy, hitters. Happy trails. So if you're looking for emotional satisfaction, my advice to you is seek professional hero clicks now. Are you serious? Again? How many people even play this game? Like 100 instant deadpan humor. Over oh, they, six uh, people think I am funny. I'm your Captain America. That was just you in a costume.